Okay, we're going to start playing around with this gear. Apparently this one-way bearing is kind of stuck. So I don't have much of a choice but to try to loosen it up. Worst case scenario, i got to buy a new gear. So let's give it a try. Using the flat nose punch and lightly tap this outer gear a little bit and see what it does. It is turning, but oh, I'm wondering how much damage internally it is. Eh. Moment off to knock off one of them teeth. If I knock one of them teeth off, I'm, I'm totally screwed. What if I put some more penetrating oil on it? See if that'll help it a little bit. See if that'll help it a little. Because these two gears are supposed to spin separately. And being that I clean everything else up in this uh, motor, and everything seemed to be okay. I guess I could try a set of big channel locks on it and see, well, I don't even know if my channel locks will even open that much. Yeah, no way, no way. I don't have chain locks that big. So I just have to keep bumping it, that's all. I like to try to find my flat nose punch. It might work a little bit better. Is I think that one's just a little bit too small for the teeth. This one's working better, but I'm still afraid I'm going to knock a tooth off or something. But this gear is supposed to be hardened steel, so it should be able to handle a little bit of tapping. It is burning though. Yeah, but I still don't like it. I still don't like it. Let's try this flat nose. Gotta put the stress completely across the whole gear, the whole tooth instead of one spot on the tooth. Yes, I know this is a file, but I can't find my uh, other punch, flat nose punch. This works pretty good though. As long as it doesn't knock a tooth off or damage it, it should be okay. Because I think this is a one way bearing. I think. Yeah, it's a one-way bearing. I'm going to have to buy me a set of channel locks. 
it'll open wide. It's spinning on me a little bit. Yeah, I still can't get it to, uh, still can't get it to spin freely. I don't know if that'll do it or not. I'm hoping it'll break it loose somehow. Too bad I can't take it the one way bearing off. It is starting to spin a little better. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's spinning better. Uh, not quite though. Not quite by hand. Definitely spinning better. Yeah, that's when this uh, motor got submerged. That uh, sewage corrosion, when my garage flooded, must have got into this one-way bearing. Well, there's got a tight spot there. If I can get all that crud out of there, out of that bearing, I think it'll work. It's worth a try. These gears aren't cheap. I'm assuming they're probably about a hundred and twenty bucks. Wouldn't doubt it. Definitely there it's got a dead it's kind of a Yeah, that could be because of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hitting on the vice. Yeah. Oops. It's got that one bad spot. Yeah, it's got that one bad spot that doesn't want to move. There it goes. Still doesn't want to go freely though. Okay, there. Let's try it. Get it to do a full 360. Let's move it out a little bit and see if we can get it to go uh, a little bit more. Uh, it's still pretty tight. Still pretty tight. Oh, wow. Bumping it this way makes it go the direction it's supposed to. Huh. Interesting. That's interesting. Okay, keep tapping it in the opposite direction it's supposed to go. And I guess the recoil of the taps is making it turn. Let's spray it some more. Just coat it. Ain't gonna hurt it, that's for sure. That's working anyhow. Wow. That actually did something. Loosened part of it up anyhow. Got that bad spot there. If I can get that out of there. Yeah. If I can get that bad spot out of there. 
crud that's in there. I can still feel the crud that's in there. Too bad. Uh, I don't know how to take this apart. Ooh, almost, almost did a full 360. Almost. If I bump it in the opposite direction, it's supposed to roll. The recall makes it spin. Almost, almost. Oh, almost. I've got two spins out of it. Okay, I can't get in more. Okay, let's spray some more on there. Surely ain't gonna hurt, that's for sure. Okay, bump it the opposite direction and it makes it huh. it's interesting. The recall of the bump makes it go the right direction. Oh, almost. Almost. Ah, they're ahead of full 360, that's for sure. Definitely has a full 360. Just a slight tap on it makes it spin. So I wonder... I need it to spin completely before I can try to attempt to take it apart. All right. Oh. Should have sprayed it while I was spinning it. Ah. Okay, let's spray it while I'm spinning it. Ah, oh, sure, she locked up again. Yeah. Slight tap seems to loosen it back up again. It'll spin. Uh, I'm going to pull the dust covers off the bearings and see what happens. I think this side also has something on it as well. Uh, I'm making a mess. But, uh, that's to be expected, I guess. It is definitely spinning now. Up uh, there it, it hangs up again. With just a slight tap, knocks it loose again. Ever so slight tap. Okay, I see. Okay, let's get some more lube in there. It is working. Feels good. Feels nice and smooth. Now I have to take a closer look at this main gear here to see if I damaged it any. I don't think I, I don't think I did, but I still might have to buy another one. But if I could save a hundred bucks, for sure. This is what the one guy was showing on his video when he was doing a breakdown of this, of how little of grease is actually in these uh, motors from the very beginning, from the factory. And he was showing on this precise gear on the this other side here, it was actually showing signs of rust on his primary gear this primary gear that he had broken it down I guess it was uh, 
five, six years ago, I suppose, that he supposedly did this. Yeah, no, no, two years ago, in 22, May 1st of 22, that he had uh, broke this down. And it showed uh, this gear had rust all over it. So it kind of tells you the manufacturer, uh, they do definitely quality. That's for sure, but man, they need to definitely grease these better. I had already taken my other one, uh, the new one that they had sent me. This is my backup motor. So there, it's it's definitely functioning now. It's definitely functioning. Let's see. Let's take it off and see. Now, this should spin by itself. It is. It's spinning really nice and smooth, too. Yeah, you can see the rust right there, all the way around that. All the way around it. I wonder if I can get that uh, off of there to uh, try and clean it up. Yeah, you can see it right there. It's... Uh, it's corroded pretty bad. Yeah, for sure. It's all the way around there. All the way around there. The corrosion. Wow. It really did corrode this thing pretty bad. But if I can press these bearings off and get in there and clean it up it might be okay I do have a press so pressing them back on isn't wouldn't be an issue this one is very very smooth this side now this here feels really good now this so we're going to find out Let's see if I can take this apart because you can feel the crud coming out of it. Did I mess up any of the teeth though? That's what I'm wondering. Doesn't look like it. Because these are hardened steel gears, so take a lot to damage them. They look okay. But I've got to definitely do something about this so there's a lot of corrosion there I gotta wash that out yeah you can still see the the dirt and stuff coming out yeah you can still see the dirt and stuff coming out of it yeah I'm gonna have to really keep coating this all that all I'm using is WD-40 I figured that'd probably be the best penetrator stuff to use for something like this. It's the thinnest uh, basic kind of a lubricant. Well, WD-40 technically isn't considered a lubricant. But even though it does, it's supposed to be water displacement. But yeah, you can see the rust. The more I spin it, and the more I coat it with the WD-40 the more the stuff comes out. So if I do this, keep going like this, it might actually clean it up to where this thing is fully usable. Yeah, you can see the dirt over here even. Yeah, wow. That's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Wow. No, that's doing pretty good. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. I was able to save it. 
And it seems to work pretty good. You just got to wait for my guest. My guest gets to get in. You can see here, it spins beautifully. And there's the pedals. Because without the gasket, it won't spin. It actually uh, needs that gasket for as for spacing, I suppose. The tolerances are that close. But all I can do is hope for those gaskets to come in soon. As soon as I uh, replace this gasket, as you can see, if you look closely there, you see the space. And that's the amount of, that's how thick the gaskets are. Well, not quite that thick, but pretty thick. But uh, I tried tightening it up without the gasket, and it just tightens it too much to where this is, and it actually pinches this. But it's rolling very smooth now. I was able to salvage that gear. And hopefully the controller is still good. Uh, if it, the controller is bad, well, I'll just have to eventually get another one. They're $125 for them. But that includes the housing, but no gears, though. But that's the whole side housing. So, uh, hopefully, uh, the problem was, because of the corrosion, was the one-way bearing... In the middle gear between the primary where your um, paw is at and uh, the motor gear the one in the center that has the one-way bearing on it uh, that's what was completely corroded I was able to flush it to the point to where no more corrosion came out it ran smoothly I packed well, it didn't pack. I sprayed a lot of lithium grease. It's designed for that kind of stuff. There's one-way bearings and stuff like that. That's what it's designed for. But I went ahead and sprayed it in there. Uh, then after doing that on the drill, using uh, that one-way bearing on the drill, finally got it uh, fully lubricated. Then I uh, sprayed it with my contact cleaner. This electrical contract cleaner is all it is. Uh, clean it all up. Regrease the whole gear. Regrease everything. Put it all back together. And this is uh, right here. I could probably technically test this motor the way it is without the gasket. But I don't want to take a chance of uh, shit flying all over the place. You know, if I energize the motor and uh, hit the throttle by chance. Oh, and also I need a display to try too because my last DPC-14 uh, display took a dump for some unknown reason. My, it did the exact same thing my uh, DPC-18 uh, did. No warning. It just went boop, gone. Quit working. Solid black. So, hope it helps anybody. Thanks for watching.